Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Mike and Wendy and we're going to talk all about short-term rentals and short-term accommodations. I'm so glad that they've taken some time out of their day to join me and talk about uh, one of their favorite strategies. Before we get into it with Mike and Wendy, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Mike, Wendy, so great to have you guys here. I don't know what's taking you so long. We've been friends Hi. for a while yeah. and I'm finally getting you here to do an interview. Um, Sorry. Before we jump in, why don't you guys give us a bit of a background on who you guys are and what you do as real estate investors? We, we've been doing this quite a while. Um, we started when we were uh, just youngsters. Um, oh, yes. Uh, cool. Back in Vancouver. Um, and about 10 years ago, we moved to Toronto. Uh, not real estate related, but um, uh, we've been learning the uh, Ontario market. Uh, we've also um, invested in the US. Um, our main strategy is cash flow, positive cash flow. <laughs> good we like Why it. not? Yeah. We like it. Good. So, Speaking of cash flow, that's where we looked at other strategies to increase our cash flow. And that's how we got to really look at STAs or short term accommodations. Why are short term accommodations or short term rentals or Airbnb or VRBO or whatever you want to call them? Uh, why are they better in terms of cash flow than a standard rental in your experience? Um, well, uh, because um, you can, you can, the rent is you know, you get to set it. So it's not, not necessarily, it is obviously market dependent, but you know, you get to raise it when it's high season and you get to change it when it's low season. Whereas with, if you've got a long-term tenant in place, you know, that's your rent for the year. And depending on what, you know, what state or province you're in or city that you're in, you're, you know, they only allow you to do a certain increase per year it, it doesn't take long for you to uh earn in an sta what you can earn in a in a long-term tenant for example uh we could charge 1800 a month for a long-term tenant it doesn't take that long to charge 250 night to earn that 1800 dollars a month uh in an sta there is more work involved there are some expenses involved for sure but um overall the the amount uh that you're able to make above and beyond a long-term rental is, is quite significant and so how do you calculate the the vacancy because as a long-term rental we're going to mm -hmm. probably calculate you're going to have a month or two of vacancy like every two years with yeah. uh, if you have if you have a strong rental market if you're a short-term rental what is that allotment like what do you allow for vacancy you know 250 a night is great if you got 30 nights uh you know every sure. month but that's mm -hmm. not right. the case right so how do you well, how's that uh what's that percentage look like or how do you factor that in we typically calculate it at um like 50 percent of the year so that's that's a safe a safe way to go i mean listen depending on what market you're in if you know you sometimes it's every night of the year you could have that place booked right but for for safety we calculated at 50 percent what did you end up buying in prince Edward county and why did you choose that style of property wendy was definitely the mastermind and had the vision on this property um i i'd been to the area before we like wendy said we we'd looked at the area before we've been keeping our eye on properties but she really she found this property and she can actually tell you the deal oh yeah because it's an awesome you want to hear the deal <laughs> okay oh. so uh it was listed last fall for 450 then they lowered it to 425 it's a duplex by the way so this is a side-by-side -side, um duplex and so i was like i was intrigued i saw the price go down i was kind of watching it and then i had called the county and i said listen i know you guys are having a housing crisis and i know you guys are kind of putting the kibosh on that sta stuff what's the deal and they said so long as you have a full-time tenant or the owner lives in one unit you can have the other automatically grandfathered in as a short-term rental. And I'm like, oh, 
there you go. So, because we thought, and they said, because if you're buying a single family home, I think we have two slots left is what she said. And then after that, we're cutting off uh, short-term rentals in this area because it's so saturated. You haven't finished the deal. Oh, the deal, the deal, the deal. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, this is good. So then it was lower to, the price went down to 425 and uh, we offered 3425 because it had been on the market. <laughs> Because he'd been on the market for a while and uh, they took it. Wow. So, um, yeah, so that was pretty awesome. Um, Before you jumped into this property, is there for, for those people that want to get into short-term rentals, because this is actually something that has been very profitable, I think, uh, especially with, with the current situation of what's going on, yeah. because people are spending more time locally traveling. What should um, first-time investors, people that are getting into this space, what should they be looking for in a property if they want to get into short-term rentals? Well, listen, you're right. This the the pandemic sure has changed the face of STAs because uh, you know if you live in a big city, you know that a lot of condo buildings and strata buildings have banned STAs because there's been too many parties and too many things that have gone wrong. So it's and, the, and their own housing crises, right? Crises. So it's it's begin it's began to be limited in in certain areas. So make sure there's an appetite in the area that you're looking yeah. to invest in. Make sure that there's an appetite and it's worth doing. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Again, it's about you know when you're purchasing a property, this is about running the numbers at the end of the day. If this thing doesn't cash flow when you're calculating at fifty percent of the year, like you know the high season. Um, then, you know, probably don't do it. You know, it's one of those things where um, if you can get something that works all year round, even better. Mm. Um, you know, that was going to be my next question. Is, yeah. You know, does this property, you took, take away the Airbnb element of it. Does it still work as a rental? A hundred percent. And that mm. was why, you know, we ran the numbers on, on the, all the scenarios, right? So we did, we ran the numbers on renting it out as two long-term tenants. We rented it, we ran it as, um, you know, what would be an STA and a full-time tenant and at 50% of the year. And then, hey, listen, if we got lucky and did 75% of the year, what would that look like? And, you know, that was, we were laughing. I mean, yeah. we're, <laughs> so, we're laughing at two long-term tenants. Anything yeah. above and beyond that. Yeah, two just... long-term tenants we were cash flowing. So, so this is this is bonus. This is really. I, I think another thing that um, first timers need to consider is how hands on they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But fortunately, there's actually some some online training that you can take mm -hmm. on how to run Airbnbs. Um, there's people that you can hire to run your Airbnb. So you can go from complete hands on to complete hands off anywhere in between so right you guys are about two and a half hours away from prince edward county if that's we're, we're actually two which is great so nice. yeah so Do you we, plan to use this for personal use as well like is that an did that decision factor into you know uh buying this as well yeah yeah absolutely we sort of we wanted something that we could maybe have you know a weekend away here or there to enjoy it and um and yet you know, make some money when we're not there, which was really cool. So are you planning to block off time? Or are you going to just kind of like see what's not booked and then try to well, take advantage of it? That's a great question, actually. You know what? We, we, we've got a, a, a JV partner on this project. Hmm. Really, he, he wasn't too keen to be in on this deal um, for whatever. He didn't know the area as, as well as we did. But um, we, you know, showed him our due diligence and he understood the passion we have behind this particular property and, and this area and he's come out to the to the property and he's like um so we can can we book some time here can we <laughs> he is all over this place and he just wanted to be in and out as, as um as an investor on this deal and uh, I, I think he wants to be in a little longer we'll see 
So. Yeah. No, it's a beautiful area. And I, I, I've spent some time there too. And it's amazing what's, what's happening there, the transformation with the wineries and the restaurants and everything. Yeah. Perfect location between halfway between Ottawa, Montreal and Toronto. So you've got both yeah, exactly. you know, people. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a phenomenal. I've been looking there for years. So whenever you guys want to sell this, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> or we can do a flip to JB. And then there you go. Here. Yeah. There's, there's many possibilities. Yes. Absolutely. Um, let's dive into the numbers. If you guys don't mind, can we, can we talk a little bit about sure. the numbers? Absolutely. You mentioned the purchase price. Um, what was the reno? How long did it take? What did you do? So uh, the budget, the, for the reno was one one hundred and thirty thousand, and that wasn't including um, the fact that at the point when we had the inspection done, the inspector said the plumbing's fine. Oh yes, don't <laughs> you worry. All the plumbing looks great under here in the crawl space, and oh yeah, the electrical. Don't worry, it's good. Um, and then the plumber showed up to give us a quote for adding two bathrooms to the place, and he's like. Um, yeah, and about your plumbing under here, this is like the worst DIY we have ever seen ever, or like it was in the top five, I think, worst DIYs he'd ever seen. Uh, so we had to completely redo every stitch of plumbing in that house. Um, Plus run the, we, we converted one of the upstairs bedrooms into two bathrooms, one for each side, mm -hmm. because when we bought the property, they were both three bedroom, one bath. And the bath was on the main floor where you have to traipse through the living room and kitchen to get mm. to the bathroom. So we didn't think it was a very, uh, no, very good great. way to, to uh, configure, especially an Airbnb. No, so you, so started with the, you started with the 130 budget. Yeah. Did that escalate from there? Like in terms of like uh, plumbing? No, we actually, we came in right at 130. There was, a, there was things that I had, you know, budgeted for more than I thought. Um, there were some trades that we had budgeted for that we were able to do the work for instead. So we saved there. And so that, you know, extra $10,000 uh, to put two new bathrooms in um, came out of that. So I had, we had budgeted for, um, you know, a flooring for painting for, and so Mike and I ended up doing the flooring and the painting which saved us that money, which then we could then turn in turn put into the bathrooms, which was great. So yeah, we came in on budget. I moved there on May 1st and I lived in the construction desk um, until basically September. Um, so I had, yeah, I had, uh, I had hoped to get it done. I was, I had given myself three months to do the renovation. Um, not keeping in mind that I was actually renovating two houses, technically mm. not just one. Also not keeping in mind that I was in a small town uh, where the trades are few and far between. Five months on the reno, 130,000. Hey, four and a half, let's call it. <laughs> four, sorry, four and a half. <laughs> okay, five. Uh, <laughs> four and a half, um, 130. Yep. You said you got it for 340, so we said? 340, 340. five, yep. So we're in for about 470. Four. 475 472 yeah yeah and um, and did you what did you do how did you finance did you private did you cash out of your pocket what'd you do so we uh so how we structured the jv deal was we um uh, we paid for the reno and he got the financing and did the closing costs and all and the you, all the purchase and the we're purchase doing costs. doing 50 50 and so you're just going to leave that all in the property essentially. So whatever you guys have in, like you're not planning to refi right away or cash out or anything like that. We, we, we have options. Yeah. Yeah, for um, sure. We, we may look at uh, buying out our partner. We may look at flipping to a JV. Um, we may keep it in there. We, we may refinance. There's, there's like, really we can do whatever we want with this property. Um, what, what, what would you say the valuation is like after you have, have you increased the value significantly? Yeah, it's uh, it's about 675 is what the current value is. So <laughs> 200,000 in equity. Nice. Ching -ching. For all the yeah. dust and the cuts <laughs> yeah. and the bruises and the blood and the tears and the sweat. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But our neighbor right to right next door to us just sold his property, which is barely still standing. He sold his property for about 560 private. Um, 
Well, we don't and, know. We're guessing. We think it's close to that. Yeah. 575 so, maybe. So he um, won't tell us for some reason. So 675 is a conservative valuation of this property. Nice. So I'm just doing quick math here. You yeah. Know, you're looking at even if you left 135,000 into this property, you'd still be able to cash out all the money you have into it. Would it still cash flow if you went to yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It'll it'll still cash flow little over a thousand a month um, with a with a refi at 675. So this is a classic like twist on a burr essentially, right? Like buy, yeah. renovate, refinance, rent, repeat yeah. with a short-term rental and a long-term <laughs> rental and something that you guys can use as your own um, cottage for vacation rental purposes. Yeah, so absolutely. Really unique transaction. And sounds like, you know, a lot of the due diligence that you did in the beginning to just know that you could put in like this short term rental and you could do what you wanted to do has has paid off in droves for sure. Yeah, we, we didn't. Honestly, we didn't expect it to increase in value that much. But, but with what happened with the to the with market the, to the, the market the market, um, market yeah. has just like that market has just exploded. Mm. Um, so you know, we'd like to say we're, we're geniuses, but, but we, that's a pretty good fortune there. Worked our butts off. We, 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 we worked a good deal. If the easiest money you're going to make is on the purchase, right? Like I am not lifting a finger and we made probably about $60,000 easy. You purchased it under market value. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Phenomenal. I love this deal. Um, I love, thank you guys so much for walking us through and I think there's a lot of, um, for folks looking to get into short-term rentals and short-term accommodations, um, which is going to be, I think, very popular in, in like I say, for domestic travel, people looking yeah. at uh, alternatives. Um, your biggest takeaway would be what for, the, for this transaction? What's the one thing you've probably um, learned on this one that you will forever take uh, to your next deals? <laughs> so many lessons. <laughs> so many learnings so many learnings <laughs> don't wear your um diamond wedding ring during when you're renovating because it'll your diamond will pop off and it'll fall under the deck and then you'll spend weeks trying to find it you'll spend weeks pulling up the deck boards looking for a diamond that was actually in the fridge yeah but so. we'll, we'll, we won't talk about that we're not going to talk about that. um but uh no i would say the biggest learning was probably the fact that out of this pandemic that we've all been through, the, who would have known that, you know, it's so hard to get on a plane now that everybody is traveling in their backyard and they're craving getting out of their, their four walls and get it, seeing something new and experiencing something new and staying local. Um, you know, that to me has been huge. So I, I, that, and, I just think. And the thing I didn't expect was actually uh, meeting and becoming friends with so many of the locals. Um, we, you know, you hear that uh, locals may be standoffish or look down on city people or whatever, um, but if, if you make an effort to engage and they see that you're working hard to improve their neighborhood and being very respectful, yeah. um, they'll, you know, you're like brother and sister to them. There's nothing they won't do. You, it, like we quickly quick story we uh we slept on an air mattress um for, while we're, while for we're, four and a half months for four and a half months <laughs> that's cool and, you're still uh, married wow yeah it would have been awesome if we actually brought the air pump for this air mattress yeah. <laughs> so, find it. so our neighbor across the street very graciously said bring your air mattress across here i've got uh air compressor in my garage and he hooked us up, carried the air mattress across full, the street. Across the street. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we've just made some great and friends. Out ladders, there. table saws, <laughs> we've been all the things, like we're just, everybody's been so amazing. Awesome. Well, Wendy, Mike, thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to um, to join me and to really explain this this strategy. I think it's, uh, I think it's phenomenal. And I, I'm so ha happy for you guys. You've created this beautiful trifecta of a, of a rental property that is Thank a short-term rental long-term rental and also a vacation property for you guys if you guys enjoyed the session with wendy and mike go ahead and hit the like button you can also subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me 
You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys again so much for joining me. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And I know that our paths will cross hopefully sooner than later because we live just around the corner from one yes. another. Let's get Down together the soon. He's right over there. Let's get together for a socially distant freezing cold beer in the back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Canada. Yeah, thanks guys. And have a wonderful right. evening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah.